and welcome to another 2024 candidate interview with Maui Pono Network. Maui Pono Network is a, a political action committee here on Maui, and we are focused on uh, local governance and getting you all the information that you need to be an informed voter, helping you be more involved and more informed about what's happening in our county. And we love doing these candidate interviews. Uh, our volunteers spend uh, hundreds of hours, literally hundreds of hours, getting these interviews together for you. And uh, we're glad you're here, whether you're with us on the live stream or you're watching it after the fact uh, on YouTube or on our website, learn more about the candidates for this 2024 election cycle. Tonight, we have a candidate running for uh, Maui County Council. It's Johnny Pronas, and he is running for the South Maui seat. Uh, and he gets to be in a primary. There are not very many primaries this year, so we're excited for that. Uh, tonight in our interview panel, we have Paul Deslaurier, who has been a member of My Opponent Network for a long time, along with Bruce Douglas, also a longtime member, and Ann Fifth Kately, and myself, Asia Iyer. And so we'll be uh, interviewing Johnny. And we just want to remind you, if you have other questions for these candidates, you can go ahead and uh, reach out to them and ask them. Uh, they really like answering these questions. We appreciate the time that it takes for people to run for office and the heart and just uh, all of the things that, that any individual has to put into running for office. We always try to do these interviews very respectfully and kindly because we know it takes a lot for these wonderful members of our community to really put themselves out there and run for office. So I'd like to turn a few moments over to Johnny and have him introduce himself, have him talk about where he's from, what's had him uh, get the incentive and the bug to run for office. And then Paul is going to take over moderating our interview tonight. Again, please check out our interview, other interviews on the website or on our YouTube channel. All right, Johnny, go ahead. Aloha. Maui County resident and the community out there. My name is Johnny Pronis. I'm born and raised here on the island of Maui. And why I wanna become the next Maui County Council on South Maui is I really love the people and I do a lot for the people. I do volunteer outside of my job employment. Um, I deal with um, volunteering at the Red Cross as becoming a shelter manager when there's a disaster or hurricane or storm or flooding. I newly get the call right away and I'm there to serve the community and the people of Maui. And also I do uh, volunteer at the Humane Society at the animal shelter, just taking care of the animals, rescuing, and you know, trying to find shelters or any family member that can take these animals into care, just like finding them a home or caring for these animals or well being. So that's why I want to run for Maui County Council for South Maui. Is I want to put the people first. I, I want to listen. I want to know where sh can we address the concerns here on the island and how can we execute or prospire the, the, the comments or the concerns that we need to listen either or acknowledge because why is the majority of the concerns and the suggestion around our county is that it's not being addressed or it hasn't been in mind of people to address it when people are there to give their concerns. And that's why we, I'm here for the people and I wanna be there and be in that seat to deliver what the people hear, and especially it's not just Maui, it's here all over the state of Hawaii. It's like, you do this, you know, I do that. And, you know, we all need to come together and work together as a team. That's how you, if you run a business, you want to know where is all this corruption that's going through. And you want to know where you can help or giving back or paying it forward to the people. 
So that's mm-hmm. why I want to run because, you know, it's especially like in different groups, background, you know, there's all these challenges, what people want in their community. And it looks like it's not being said or they're not acknowledging it because maybe it's not important or maybe they forgot or, you know, there's so much concerns that's out there. And that's why people, and that's why I always say to people here in Maui, come out and vote, be a registered voter because your voice matters here. No matter if like people, they just complain, complain, but they're not a registered voter. So this is the time to come out and speak for your own self because what I'm here for is to bring back or rewrite the history here in Hawaii or in Maui. Like right now, we are so shaken about the economy right now because it's either getting too expensive here or all these people are either moving or not pertaining that everybody's giving up here. So, so Johnny, I, I'd like to just, uh, you know, to, to go into that, to, we'll go into the, some of those specific questions mm-hmm. about the economy and things like that. But first of all, I just want to acknowledge your civic engagement, uh, you know, as you work with the Humane Society and, we, uh, and also helping with the Red Cross and to be there during disasters. And you said one thing that's really important is to listen, listen to the community, listen to the needs. And certainly in Kihei, if you were to listen to the environment in terms of what's happening during high rains that we have when there's flooding that occurs uh, throughout the whole area, uh, what would you do and what would you suggest in terms of dealing with that situation that has been going on now for a long, long time? Right now, the lack of these kind of situation is we are not coordinating either with the county, the state, and the city, because that's where it is. If we, and plus, I know it's the funding that we don't have here, but if we put together an organization in a committee that can help us, you know, trying to see or trying to find out the concerns or working together to get all these kind of funds in. It's like a win-win thing that one, maybe you need some help with, you know, with plumbing or drainage or water system, you know, cause all these stuff is all connected. And this is what we need to implement right now because especially our state parks and um, beaches, when I go to these places, it's like, it's not up to date. It's not renovated. It's like worn and tear. Like they're forgetting about all these kind of issues to address and it's not being, you know, worked on. Great, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Anne, do you want a uh, next question? Yeah, you talked about the, the concerns that people have and could you be, like specific, do they have a certain theme or uh, to these, you know, that you mentioned? So I'm actually, uh, if you never heard of them, I just became a Toastmaster in that organization. And I have all these people that I play in a role. And one of this person is one of the committees in Lahaina of bringing um, history back to life. If you know about the, what do you call it? The sugarcane train in Lahaina, that's a historical oh, yeah. site. And they've been fighting for so long. They've been talking to different mayors that when they were in terms, and I don't think they even addressed about it. So are you talking about the sugarcane train coming back or? They want to bring it back. That's why they've been yeah. telling the mayors, different mayors when they were in their seat. And I don't know what's going on. Either they forgot about it or they didn't address it or maybe it wasn't a concern right now or they didn't have the money or, you know, 
they have their own organization committee on that side trying to bring back the sugarcane train for because you know it's a tourist attraction here in Hawaii right that I don't know why they even let it go you know why well th did that did they close operations on that prior to the fire or was it the fire no that was way way past that time that's what I thought that's yeah what I thought. Yeah, a lot of history was lost with the Correct. fires. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are some of the, the critical issues that affect like South Maui? You know, Paul mentioned the the wetlands being covered up, but probably have contributed to the the, the flooding. But uh, what are some of the other critical issues? So that that is an issue because I live in that area. I live on South Maui and with the big storm coming, it's hard for me to get out or go to work because I'm in that area that's affected by it. And what the issue is, is it's the drainage or the clogging of the pathway of any debris in that area. If it's not cleaned out, that means it's going to have a flooding or a prone water area that pertain to flooding and it's not pertaining it's not going to go anywhere it's just going to build up build up and then that's how you create a flooding area and the, it's going to be like a river its own river to just stream down the road just like on the main road of South Kia Road with all this river water coming down gushing it's just like almost like lava if a lava cannot go anywhere or if there's a pocket, it's gonna burst anywhere that needs to flow. Um, so, uh, can we go to, to, to Bruce next? Uh, did you have any other follow-up right now, Ann, on that or? I just wanted to ask what, what is currently being done about that right now? The so as of right now, I don't think nothing's being done. It's just, I don't know if they're waiting on people to find work that can help with this kind of issue or it's main thing is money. Like, you know, because when it, it might be a next storm that's coming in, we forgot about this kind of issue and, you know, it takes time and it's the state or, the county to work together with these kind of issues. I see. Yeah, I think right. there's some, been some mapping of wetlands and restoration efforts. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. You. Uh, You're welcome. Bruce, and then we'll go to Asia. Um, yeah, the big issue on Maui post fires has been amplified is the affordable housing situation. If you were elected to the council, uh, what would be your solution? What would you champion? How would you deal with the affordable housing crisis in Maui? I don't want to call it affordable because everybody says, what do you mean affordable? Like, are you basing it on their income or how many people they live in the household? Or, you know, because they're thinking that you know, they're living off paycheck to paycheck and they cannot even afford ends meet because when you call affordable housing, right now, I what I see around the island right now, because the, the fire is done and they're building. The only thing I see building around here on this island is apartment complex. And I get it, you're trying to make money off of people. That's how it is. We're here in Hawaii. You know, money is good. And, you know, that's how they try to build, you know, some money for the island and, you know, for their own pockets. So I don't want to say affordable. What I want if I am elected in this seat is, you know, the old modern days. They had, you know, the, the plantation homes. That was affordable back then, but I don't know right now, but it would be good if we have residential homes, not apartment complex, because that's how I think they're already getting it, that they're trying to make money off of people. And I get it. But right now, we got to think about the people. Right now, people are 
getting kicked out of the hotels and they don't know where to go. They either got to live in their car. So that means they're going to be homeless. So they're going to go to the beach, park their car on the side and just camp out. And that's what I don't want to see. And especially the homeless population, we need to get them off the street and get them to housing. So either if, look at Oahu that name, or other islands. Oahu, did you ever see Nimitz Highway? They have tiny homes and you can fit two people in there. It's like a small little cottage, but not compared to the one that I see being built by the, what church is that? The Things First Assembly of God across the street. That's like so small, but what I see on Oahu, they, on Nimitz, they have the perfect housing for people like that. And it's for the homeless people that they have it there. And you know what? They only pay $100 a month, plus they have to work. So that's why we need these kind of stuff here. We need to find resources at other states and trying to look what they built on their land in the mainland instead of here in Hawaii. We need to share inputs of what we can do for the people of Maui. Great. Thank you. And Bruce, did you have any other follow-up? Uh, or we go to Asia? You're, um, you're... We can go to Asia. We can go to Asia. Hi, Johnny. So. Um... Talk to me about, or talk to us about your feelings about water, water rights. Um, there's been a lot of this in the news lately. You know, the county uh, elected a, or sorry, put into place a new charter amendment that has to do with a, a county water authority. Uh, we've been trying to get water back into public hands, um, like water movement, because the water is in public hands, but it's leased to private companies and then comes to us. So what do you see if you were elected to be a council member, how do you think you could contribute to a positive water future for Maui? Right now, I know we only, I think we have it here on this side of the island. We have our own aquifer or water wheel or whatever around here. And I know some, cities i think it's a country that they don't have it yet but they want to build their own so if other city or um in the county of maui you know we're here to share it's nobody's water we need to share for the people of maui we all need to come together it's nobody's water what i'm saying is you know because I heard in the past that a business person, especially the one in Lahaina that I overheard, if you followed the media back then, like I think it was two years ago or before the pandemic even started, there was a business person. I don't know how he got water, you know, he or he got it from the some kind of candidate that's running in office somewhere. And I guess the people from Lahaina, you know, made a deal about it, that this person was hovering water in that area and didn't want to share. So people from Lahaina came out and wanted to put this person in his place to no, tell the people of Maui that no, 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 no. Just because you're a rich person and you have the money or you're working with people in the government or in any state or county area that either you working together with somebody in that area, like, you know, if you scratch my back, I scratch yours. And that must be it, you know, because he has the money to do all these kind of power, you know? But that's why people from the Haina in that community came out and full blast him in that area. And that wasn't okay. Especially the native Hawaiians were pissed. Like that's why look what happened to Lahaina. There is no water. And that's why it's so hot 
no rain, no drought, no water to shoot the fire out. That's why it explode everything into proportion. So now that people are trying to blame each other, why don't you blame the business person that did all this kind of crap? Because I know that somebody is hovering all this water, maybe they putting it in their own land, where they own land, and not sharing the bund of it in their area. So that pisses people off. Sorry about my language, but yeah, that's what people are frustrated and they're angry. That's why if you saw the cocoa this morning or was it yesterday, they had people come out and talk about the water crisis that, you know, I know there's somebody in here working with some kind of business and not letting the people of Maui know. So thank you, thank you for that, Johnny. Um, and this, this is our, these are our last questions, Asia. So, uh, so thank you for that. And uh, Johnny, I'll ask my my next question has to do with again Kihei, because there's so much development happening here right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's incredible the number of units that are going up, and yet right now, even before those units are completed, we already have significant traffic jams and problems, mm -hmm. especially when you look at the the highway that goes to one lane at one point in time. So again, at near the end, as it goes towards Wailea, it's again, there's issues that we have with all of this development, but yet our infrastructure is not here to support it. What would you do and how would you address this need that our community has here in, in Kihei? Right now, I get it, it's the, we need to find a domination of these kind of issues and pertaining that, you know, our roads are not fit for these kind of crowdness, that we need to find some kind of issues. I know because the new school is built on the highway, and I know they only have students going to that from freshman and sophomore right now because with the issue with junior year and senior year coming up, maybe they'll do it next year, but I don't think they're going to do it now because I guess they're waiting for the uh, pedestrian pathway over the highway to get to the other side. So... Being said with that is like, you need to know what is the height and weight of that projection walkway. And plus vehicles might be bigger than what you seem to see right now. Like bulldozer might come across that area and it might not even, you know, it might be too small for that kind of vehicle to fit underneath that. Projection I, I understand, Johnny. So, so what you're suggesting, though, in terms of dealing with our, our traffic infrastructure issues that we have is to make sure that we get the uh, high school going. Certainly uh, having a circle there on the highway was a new experience for a lot of the residents here, mm -hmm. uh, including myself. And so, uh, so again, yes, uh, I hear that that would be one aspect of that. So yeah. uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Ann? Uh, your next yeah, question. Getting back to housing, I'm sure you acknowledge that there's a housing crisis that was actually there before the fire, right? The fire just exacerbated it, right? And there's a, mm -hmm. a bill signed into law by the, the governor that affects, that gives uh, the county more authority in regulating these short term rentals. What, what is your um, belief on, on these conversion of short-term rentals to long-term rentals in order to accommodate more people into housing, more local residents? So I never mentioned this, but I'm going to put it out there. I work with a nonprofit organization, and you might have heard of them already, and they do a lot of good things. And what I was doing in that kind of area is helping my community um, finding assistance. 
like either you need a job or you need, you know, assist it with clothing, um, school supplies for your kids or assistance for housing, either a down payment or a deposit, especially if you had lost a car in the fire, you get help with a couple months payment or a deposit for a brand new vehicle. And, you know, trying to get people some hope that there is no shame of getting all these kind of assistance. We're there to help you. We're help. We're trying to help you get through this kind of phase. What happened to them? So, um, I was a employment specialist. If you heard about this program, it was for the National Dislocated Workers Grant, and I was under MEO, Maui Economic Opportunity, and I filled. Yeah, that I did a lot for these people and the community and trying to get help and looking to that phase of long term and short term rental. It's like it might not be enough what they expect when they, you know, trying to get help with that kind of assistance because, you know, it's a one time thing. It's not like it's going to be there all the time. So that meaning once the funds run out, you know, hopefully they have jobs in place to fulfill the rest of what you can provide for yourself. Because it's just a, you know, a temporary assistant for you to get. So that's why I do that kind of job. And I really felt good about it because I get to help people. Just like when I help people at the shelter or I help people at the Humane Society with animals, trying to adopt them or trying to get animals to care for their people. And then maybe they lost an animal during the time of the fire. So we're trying to, I'm trying to give back to the community and paying it forward. Thank you, thank so you for that. Do you support the, the, the county as having authority to regulate short-term? Rentals can their conversion to long term rentals. Do you think that's a that's a you said a temporary answer, but do you support that? I do support it if it's gonna work properly in place. Just to give them time to you know get assistance and then once the money run out, hopefully they can get their lives back together. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Bruce, uh, this will be the last question. Yes, Johnny. Um, the sign of a true statement, statesman isn't just what you vote on while you're sitting in council, but what bills you actually champion and put forth to the research on, write the bills and put them forward. If you're elected to county council, give me a description of three, briefly three bills that you would want to champion and work on during your two years in office? So the first one I wanna put in place is the housing crisis. Getting the people into homes, something over their head, instead of living in their cars or at the beach or camping in their tents. The second one is homeless population. When I see people walk through my doors at MEO, I see them, you know, traumatized. They're like a victim and I'm here to listen and assist them with whatever assistance they need to get past this tragic moment of their lives and getting them to where they need to be before the fire even happened. And the third is finding sustainability for the economy, working with different kind of departments, trying to strive for the people of Maui, for not them, for families, to move off and go somewhere else. Because 
this is where they're born and raised. Why is the government or anybody, you know, doing these kind of stuff for the people and trying to play games with people's minds? And, you know, it's like almost the pandemic. The person that dealed with all that kind of theory, you know, with if you heard about the doctor that I saw, was it last night on the CNN? And they wanted to hear a hearing from him. And then I guess he's, everybody's trying to take him to court that it was a conspiracy. Like this kind of stuff didn't even happen for real, but you know how them, they try to control everybody. And what people in America nowadays, they want payment. Even though they already got payment for you to because they lost their jobs or they couldn't get out because you know there was a law in place. So that's how the government trying to pay people to stay home and not go to work. So now everybody's pissed because they lost all their income from previous years. And now they're trying to blame the government and suing the government, or they're trying to sue Dr. Folly Foucher, the person that was interviewing with the COVID pandemic crisis, that, oh, we put this in place, you know, or experiencing, you know, kind of guinea pigs for the human being or the humanity all over the world. So that was a very, like, like we, we have to be cautious of what, you know, either it's gonna be real or is it fake? So that's how we wanna pertain information and it has to be the facts, not a theory or not something fake. So, yeah. Uh, Bruce, did you have any other follow-up with that? Well, I'll pass it onward. Okay. So uh, thank you, Johnny. Johnny, thank you. First of all, I, I just want to again acknowledge you for running for office. Uh, it takes a lot of chutzpah to to say that okay, I'm going to look at engaging myself in civic action like this, and participate in the county council. So to have that as a goal and objective, uh, that's you know very good, and we want to keep on encouraging you to keep on working in civic engagement like this because we need more people like yourself to say, okay, I'm, I'm willing to take a stand and uh, really be part of what I truly believe and, and what I see is needed here for the county. So so thank you for running. And uh, again, you'll, you'll have some very interesting can uh, candidates that you'll be uh, running up against for the uh, seat here in Kihei. So, uh, but again, uh, I wish you the best and thank you, Johnny. Uh, uh, any other things before we end? Uh, Bruce and uh, Johnny, would you like to would you like to close with any statements that you'd like to make in closing? So, if I get elected in this seat for South Maui County Council, I will do my best to fulfill the obligation for the people of Maui County, the best of my ability to ensure that people here on the island will have a sustainability to stay here on Maui instead of moving off. Because that's what I see right now. And it's so hard to see people that you met either outside of this community or in a different neighborhood. And, you know, it's like you're saying goodbye until we meet again. So, mm -hmm. As a politician, you know, I see that I feel that I am for the people and I'm willing to go all the way for them and stand by them. I will even go to work with them, especially if they have a business or, you know, I'm here to walk with them, just like when Jesus was here on earth, I would be that person, that role model, and stay by your side until the end. 
and me, I'm a fighter. So I will go out of my way to sure to get what people need here in Hawaii. Great. Thank well, you. Thank you for that, Johnny. Uh, good. And uh, we will be having more interviews as we continue with the Maui Pono Network. And again, our objective and goal is to make it so that you get to listen to all the candidates who want to have this in-depth interview and also so that you can make an informed decision when it comes time for the primary as well as the general election. Mahalo for watching.